Tonight, 60 tech companies speak out on net neutrality, how Sony Pictures is fighting the hackers who hacked them, and Ford's new love for BlackBerry. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 233 for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface, integrations with Getty Images and Google Apps, new templates, and an incredible feature called Cover Pages. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Cable companies and web services have all been pretty vocal about their stances on net neutrality. And today, 60 tech companies, including Intel, IBM, and Qualcomm, have signed a letter opposing reclassifying broadband service under Title II of the Telecommunications Act. The letter is addressed to members of Congress and to the FCC and warns that stricter regulation would stop companies from investing in broadband. Broadband providers argue that Title II's regulations would be so strict and numerous that it would be difficult to operate such a network. In fact, last month, AT&T said that it was putting its fast fiber network development on hold until the company knew what rules would actually be passed. The FCC originally said that it hoped to have rules in place by the end of this year, but has since delayed them until sometime in 2015. Sony Pictures Entertainment is trying to disrupt downloads of sensitive information that was exposed when a hacking attack crippled its systems a few weeks ago. Specifically, Sony is using hundreds of computers in Asia to execute a denial of service attack on sites where the data is available. This is according to two people with direct knowledge of the matter speaking to Recode. The data includes financial information, budgets, payroll data, internal emails, some of them embarrassing, and even feature films. And Sony is reportedly using Amazon Web Services, which operates data centers in Tokyo and Singapore to carry out the counterattack, one of the sources said. The method has been applied in the past by media companies to combat inter internet movie and music piracy. Microsoft's suite of MSN apps have come to iOS and Android as the company promised it would back in September. These apps include news, weather, sports, money, health and fitness, and food and drink, and were previously available only for Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8. This follows Microsoft making some of its other consumer-focused apps available on iOS and Android and the Kindle platforms as well, including Bing Search, OneDrive Cloud Storage, OneNote Note-Taking, and Skype. In other Microsoft news, the company is getting on the Bitcoin bandwagon and has added Bitcoin support to its Microsoft account. So Bitcoin funds can be added to accounts to enable things like digital purchases from the Windows, Windows Phone, Xbox games, Xbox music, Xbox video stores. Now, up to $100 can be added at a time. It's a little bit limited. The option is currently only available to U.S. accounts, and there's no direct purchase option. The Bitcoin support does come via BitPay. In fact, let's just stay on the Microsoft train today, a little bit longer anyway. Joining us with more is Michael Gorman, Editor-in-Chief at Engadget. Hey, Michael. Hey, sir. Nice to be here. Nice to have you. In San Francisco, we're getting pummeled by some rain. You and I spoke right. before the show that we're both okay. Yep, yep, we made it. <laughs> we made it. So far, <laughs> yep. anyway, at 4.13 yep. p.m. Pacific time. All right, so article on Engadget today that Ford is dropping Microsoft and revamping its sync system for more speed. Ford really came into, uh, you know, came into the spotlight a few years ago. In fact, they used to uh, sponsor uh, some of our shows here on Twit, and it was it was all this great tech, and Microsoft was behind all of that. So why the switch? Uh, I mean, generally, I think they were getting, I guess, lower scores than they had hoped that they would in, you know, kind of like JD Power surveys and those kinds of things. And that was really, I think, kind of the the final nail in the coffin. If you've ever kind of use the old sync, it can be, you know, it's not the best user experience. You got to dive through a whole bunch of menus. And I think the the shift to QNX is just to kind of uh, streamline things and make it easier to use. All right. So QNX, that's BlackBerry's QNX mm -hmm. platform. Hey, what does this say for BlackBerry? Obviously, BlackBerry has had its share of struggles as well. Companies obviously uh, trying to to woo users back, certainly in the enterprise with 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 new stuff. But yep. I would think having Ford as a client is pretty big. 
It is, and it actually adds them to a pretty impressive kind of Rolodex of automotive companies. I mean, they work with um, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, all use QNX. I think Honda does as well. So they've they've always done pretty well in in automotive for a while now. I mean, QNX has powered a lot of infotainment systems um, for many years, um, and Ford, of course, that's a big. That's a big company. They sell a lot of cars. Um, they're putting kind of uh, the sync technology in their whole range. So I mean, it gives. It's a big win for them. You know, there's. It's a. It's a big manufacturer, and they're going to be moving a lot of units packing QNX software now. So it sounds like sync, as you mentioned, it didn't really go over well in in real world use. Do we know much about how having a BlackBerry QNX uh, infrastructure is going to change any of the features or add more? Yes. Yeah, so I think probably the most useful bits are going to be they've kind of revamped uh, the user interface. So um, higher contrast fonts just to kind of make it easier to get around and navigate with the touchscreen. Um, but also it's got a much more robust um, voice recognition system. So generally that means you can talk in a more conversational tone instead of in the old sync system where you kind of had to have very specific commands that you had to remember to get where you wanted to go. Um, now, for instance, you know, if you're trying to navigate to an airport, you can just say, you know, I need to get to Minneapolis airport instead of saying the proper name of that airport or here in San Jose, you can just say San Jose airport instead of the San Jose Mineta, you know, international airport to get it where you need to go. Right. So I think from that standpoint, it just kind of streamlines things, lets people talk to their car like they would to a normal human being instead of trying to do the specific input that they have to. I wonder how many people will want to buy Ford specifically for its in-dash computer system. I mean, we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and, and some other uh, competition, really, mm -hmm. that is, 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 enables that to to be in a variety of different makes and models of, of yep. car manufacturers what, 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 where do you think in car technology <clears throat> is going i mean having something proprietary for ford is great if you have a ford but then it doesn't transfer over to you know, when you buy a passat yeah i you know i think that really the future is going to be something along the lines of android auto or apple carplay because everyone has a smartphone that's where people have their music it's really kind of, it's much easier, I think, and it makes a lot more sense to leverage kind of um, the technology that people are already familiar with and the software that they already have on their phones and just put that in the car. Uh, I realize, you know, there's differences. There's there's a higher uh, level of engineering required, and especially for a, a built-in infotainment systems. You know, car electronics have to be way more robust and deal with, you know, greater temperature swings and those kinds of things that other electronics manufacturers don't have to deal with. And that's why I think it's been kind of slow on the uptake. But the future to me really looks like basically what is the best way to integrate the phone that I have in my pocket and put that in the dashboard. Michael Gorman is the editor-in-chief at Engadget. And thanks for being on my show for the first time, Michael. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I hope it went well. It so, went so great. Uh, before <laughs> I let you go, remind folks yep. where they can keep up with your work. So it's www.engadget.com, and I am also on Twitter at Numison, N-U-M-E-S-O-N. Some other time you can tell me what that means. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Coming up, why a major airline bought 23,000 iPhones and the state that lets you have your driver's license on your smartphone. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7, which has a completely redesigned interface that makes it easy and fun to create your own professional website or online portfolio for a lot of reasons. It could be personal. It could be something, you know, that's, you know, a front-facing area for your business. It could be for your band. It could be for a lot of things. There's great Great reasons to put together a Squarespace website now. I've been a, uh, a happy Squarespace loving user for many years and Squarespace 7 just makes getting started easier than ever. If you've ever been sort of like, oh, well, I got to put together a website. It's going to take me all weekend. Not the case. With Squarespace 7, you can live edit on one screen. You're not toggling between a bunch of different views on the back end. You can preview designs in device mode. That's very important these days because lots of devices are different sizes and everybody is going to be accessing your extremely popular website. You want it to look good, right? You also have instant access to professional stock photography. That comes from Getty Images. 
images. They're awesome. Just $10 each to put together beautiful stock images that you don't necessarily have at your fingertips. Squarespace makes that easy. And they've designed category-specific templates. So I mentioned if you were in a band, stuff for musicians, a specific template for a chef. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels. If you're interested in selling cool stuff on your website, you can also accept donations. And it starts at just $8 per month. That includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Oh, and hosting is included too. So this starts to sound pretty reasonable. Squarespace takes care of the hosting and you don't ever have to worry about it. You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Just start building that website and wow everybody with your skills that you don't even need to have because Squarespace does everything for you. And when you decide, decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT and you'll get 10% off and you can also show your support for us here on TN2. To begin using Squarespace 7 as an existing customer, just go to the settings tab and activate all those new features. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Uber announced in a company blog post today that it will suspend operations in New Delhi and review its Indian operations three days after Delhi banned the service. Now, earlier this week, we told you that a woman was allegedly raped by her Uber driver in Delhi who had been arrested for sexual assault three years ago and then later acquitted. Now, Reuters reports that the same driver also has offenses on his record that include robbery, molestation, and possessing an unlicensed firearm. Uber says that it will start implementing measures to ensure that rider feedback, especially critical rider feedback, is met with immediate action. The Post also says that it will go back and review all feedback on all Indian drivers, quote, to make sure nothing has been missed. Uber goes on to say in its post, quote, we are evaluating additional screening options to include background checks on all our driver partners in India above and beyond what is currently required. Well, United Airlines really loves Apple. The company announced today that its 23,000 flight attendants will start carrying the 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus. It's pretty big. Hope you guys are ready for company use and servicing customers by the second quarter of next year. United says that deploying the iPhone 6 Plus to its flight attendant staff will allow the airline to replace paper safety manuals in the future as it makes them available on the iPhone instead. Reporting aircraft cabin issues and receiving follow-up information on repairs will also be handled through the iPhone 6 Plus eventually. The airline has also announced that it plans to develop multi multiple customer-focused tools for the iPhone following its deployment to its onboard staff. And United has also renewed its iPad pilot program using the iPad Air 2, which it calls a move toward creating paperless aircraft and flight decks. In some acquisition news, Microsoft, yeah, we're back to Microsoft, announced that it's buying Hockey App. That company provides mobile crash analytics and app distribution for developers building apps on iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. The company says that it will integrate Hockey App into the application insights service in Visual Studio Online to expand applications insights support for iOS and Android. You know, Adobe went shopping as well and picked up a little company of its own. It's announcing plans to spend $800 million in cash for stock photo site Photolia. I had never heard of it. Photolia, though, hosts 34 million images and videos. In fact, it's been around since 2005. Adobe says that Photolia will continue to operate as a standalone stock service, but Adobe will also integrate it into its creative cloud service. Finally, a reason to be jealous of Iowa. Yes. Residents of the U.S. state will soon be able to use a mobile app on their smartphones as their official driver's license issued by the Iowa Department of Transportation. The app will be provided at no additional cost and will be available sometime next year. Traditional driver's licenses will still be acceptable, but the new digital license will be accepted by Iowa law enforcement officers during traffic stops and by security officers screening travelers at Iowa's airports. Iowa is already one of more than 30 states that also allow motorists to show electronic proof of insurance during a traffic stop. I don't know how that's going to work photos that can easily be i don't know that's it for this edition of tech news tonight we trust you iowa subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash tn2 you can write us with feedback at tn2 at twit.tv and you can watch live every day monday through friday at 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern tomorrow morning tomorrow morning yeah it's friday tomorrow morning tech news today starts at 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern hope you can catch that then i'm sarah lane and thanks for watching Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.
Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and if you'd like to help us design our new website, I invite you to visit twit.to slash navtest. We've got eight quick questions we'd like to ask you that will help us make the navigation easier to use. That's twit.to slash navtest. Thanks a lot.